Hi, Riding Superstars! So today, that was a pretty epic dance, that was by accident, but I hope you liked it. <laughs> so today, we are going to be learning about how to long rein our little thoroughbred Mowgli. I'm so excited to show this to you. So in this guy, in this episode, guys, we're going to show you how to long rein. We've already shown you before how to double lunge um, and how to do some groundwork in terms of leading, etc., getting on and off, those sorts of things. But today we're going to show you how to long rein and long reining for helping your horse to understand left and right steering, halting, going, all of those sorts of things. You have to excuse in the background, G's wandering around his stable banging away. <laughs> so yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. Okay guys, so we've learnt about double lunging, okay? And we saw how useful that was to get the horse to understand the concept of an outside rein, to be able to teach them and take a little bit of the pressure on and off, have a little bit more control like you would when you're riding, but before you get on. So we used that a lot for Mowgli before we started to um, canter or to teach him how to turn the circle and get him to get use his body a little bit more. So people use it then, but then they tend to wait till it's piaf time and then use it for piaf. Actually, you can use it for so many things along the way in your riding, okay? So today, we're gonna show you how we use it for Mowgli to ride him and school him a little bit, or school him rather, school him a little bit outside of the arena and put him in scenarios that we might avoid while we're riding him. So for instance, we might let the horses run around in the field. We might wait till there's a fairly scary moment and it gives us the ability to drive him through those moments, keep teaching him how to turn left and right, how to be supple, how to open himself, etc. but without putting ourselves at risk, without feeling like we might get bucked off and if we get bucked off, we lose our horse. Just makes it all a bit safer. Okay guys, so what do you need? What do you need to be prepared? Funnily enough, it's pretty much what you do when you ride. So first of all, you need your bridle obviously. Snaffle bridle, I actually take the reins off. Anyone who watched the episode about lunging, and again, I'll put it up here so you can see it, I tend to just wrap the reins around, but when I'm doing this, I actually take them off just to prevent any other, any potential issues. So we have a saddle pad. I still put his jelly pad on just so the, cut, the saddle fits nice and comfy. I have two lunge reins, okay? And I make sure that these two lunge reins feel the same in both of my hands. So you'll see they're actually the same lunge rein and very importantly that they're not broken they're not worn and that they've got no knots in them people if you have knots in them you'll be in trouble so keep make sure they're nice and smooth and able to be used okay we've got a bridle oops put that over there we've got our girth and the most important thing which just dropped off was this we have an old stirrup leather, okay? So when I say old stirrup leather, it's in good condition. It's just not one that we use a lot and because it's quite short. And this is to actually tie the, the stirrups in a good spot so that they don't fall down and flap around and hit him, okay? So just to go through that again, you've got your normal gear that you have for riding, your saddle, your bridle, etc. And then you add two lunge reins, and a leather strap like this. You might use a neck rein, you might use an old um, stirrup leather, which what we've used here, but just something that you can tie those stirrups together and we'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Okay, so let's get him tacked up and get on with it. All right guys, so then kit for me, I've got a helmet on. You might think that's a little strange, but you never know what's gonna happen. You could just trip over, fall over, hit your head, always wear a helmet. It's so important, always wear a helmet. Gloves, okay, get your glo gloves and kit on as well. You don't have to wear riding gear. I'm just wearing riding gear because I've been riding today um, and it's bloody cold, funnily enough. <laughs> and then footwear, you wanna wear something that's gonna protect your toes, but equally something you're able to move in. So I tend to not wear my horse riding boots because I can't move in them well enough and they're often a little bit slippery underneath. So you wanna wear something that's a bit more supportive than a set of trainers in terms of, of looking after your toe, but you do need something that you can move in a little bit, okay? So 
there isn't really ideally something with a steel cap or something would be great, but it's also a little bit difficult to work in that. So it is a little bit of a compromise for figuring out the footwear, but my pieces of advice are comfortability, able to move, but also protects your toe. Definitely nothing that's slippery, nothing you're gonna whoosh, slip over on, okay? Okay, let's get into it. Okay guys, so off we are. So what you can see I've done is we've definitely tied those um, stirrups together. So you see where they've been tied together. We showed you a little bit in the arena. We might actually, sorry, in the stable. We might actually go back to that so you can see that a little bit. That's very, very important that you do that, okay? Because those are ultimately the guide for the reins, okay? Then you put your two lund ropes either side. Okay, and most important thing you've got to remember is when you're <clears throat> when you're lunging or when you're double lunging like this or doing your good boy, doing your long reining, you always want to make sure, come on now, good boy, that you're kicking distance away. <laughs> so you want to be as close as you can. However, if they kick, you want to that you're not going to get a foot in the face. So you try to measure if they kicked out, are you well behind or well far enough away from that? Okay? Then, good boy, sweetheart. You can see he's quite fresh. We've literally taken him out of the stable because we actually want him to just start to learn to be able to just take it out of the stable and off he goes. So this is all part of that training, okay? So what I do to begin with is I take him into the arena, I pop him onto the wall because the wall is almost like my training wheel and I keep him against that, okay? Now, I'll do another episode later of explaining exactly what to do here because it is quite complicated. But in a nutshell, you have your inside, one rein is your, is your leg and rein, one rein is your leg and rein, okay? So you use your reins just like you do if you rode. However, if you need to use your leg as well, you just give the rein a little tickle on his neck like that. So here if I want him to leg yield over a bit, whoop, I turn his head to the inside and I tickle him over a bit. And you can see, tickle him over, he just goes over, okay? If I want to move away from the wall, which might be a bit tricky, but I'll try, Come on, good boy, very good. Yeah, I just give his little bum a little bit of a wiggle, turn his head the way I want it to go. Come on. And the little lunge ropes like this, say to him to go or stop, okay? So if I wanted him to try it, hop, hop. Yeah, if I want to go, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And hole is just stop going fast. And he follows me, yeah? It really is that simple. Good boy. And you'll see when they're on this, they have to be quite honest. So that's what it really does create. It creates a really honest horse. And you see as I've walked him around, come on now. Come on now, good boy. He's gotten happier and happier, yeah? You'll notice when he gets upset, I come to the inside a little bit like this. That's just so he can see me. So he doesn't get anxious about not seeing me. Come on now, come on now, come on, come on now. Good boy, very good boy. Good job, okay. So now I'm comfortable and I'm happy with how he's going pop myself outside. So let's go outside. We are outside and as you can see, it is one very, very windy, very, very yucky day. So our little man doesn't necessarily want to play ball. So it's actually a perfect day for you to see. But you see, because you've got the pressure of riding not on him, you don't tend to get afraid yourself. Good boy. He doesn't tend to get so afraid and you can really just stay out here for a really long period of time and just let him find his way. It's such a really great way to get them to enjoy their riding and enjoy themselves and be able to spend hours with them without them physically exerting themselves so much. When you ride them, and they get tense like this little guy does, you get, there's, a, there's a line where you have to stop, yeah? But when you're doing this, you can tend to just give them that little bit of space to relax. And you can see here, he just wants to not stay on the track. So if you stand behind me, Toby, 
you'll actually see that all he's trying to do the whole time is just not go on the track actually. And so my, all I'm doing with him is just simply playing with him the whole time to say, hey, little man, stay on your train tracks. Stay where I ask you to go. Even though you're free, even though you're relaxing, good boy. It's all about obedience. And as you can see, it is right, it is windy as. Good boy. And you see he's relaxing now. I don't know if you can hear him snorting, it's really cool. And he started now to just be okay with the fact that, do you know what? I'm just gonna stay on my tracks. I'm just gonna stay in my moment. Good boy, lovely. Good boy. And Toby's gonna come up beside him now and then up in front of us and show you a little bit of the angle from the front as well. But you can see, since I started, how much calmer he is, how much happier he is just to accept, hey, I'm just in the middle of this track. I'm just accepting this track. Here he wants to have a little spook. Good boy. Little spook at, good boy. <laughs> a little spook at Toby. Bit too close for Toby's liking, I think, guys. But a little spook at Toby, but we're able to just calmly say, hey, keep it running, mate. Keep it running, you're okay. And all I'm doing when I'm here is thinking about my train tracks, thinking about what I'd want him to do when I was riding him, which is accept the bridle, stay on my train tracks, so stay in between my two reins. So I look at his legs and I think, can I see all four legs? Oh, sorry, two legs, not four. So are the hind legs in line with the front, etc., etc. Good boy. So I'm doing all the same things that I have in my mind when I'm riding, riding in the dressage arena. I'm just doing them off the horse which gives you a bit of a break, gives the horse something else to do, and allows you to spend more time with him, okay? Look at this. And whether you're aligning his legs to make sure he's on his train track, so to speak, off him, or whether you're doing it when you're on him, sort of is somewhat irrelevant. It's still setting himself up for success. It's still setting his body up. And you can see now, good boy, he's really starting to come to the party and understand. He is a bit downhill, so you know, that's not as easy as you'd expect. But he's really just hey, starting to accept it. Good boy. So now because of that, I can really start to play with it. So now I might say to him, right little man, I actually want you to leg yield a bit to the right. Very good boy. Now I want you to leg yield a bit to the left. Good boy. Now I want you to go straight again. Look at that and see how much more relaxed he's getting. Do the same thing again. I say, okay, little man, take it to the right a little bit. Good. Now take it to the left a little bit. Come on, good boy. And you see, he tries to go against you for that moment, but I just play it away in my fingers, just like I would if I was riding him. And for a rider yourself, you can't do all those little naughty things that you would do as a rider. So maybe you kick him a little hard. Maybe you dig your spur in. Maybe you use your reins in the wrong way. You're not able to do that when you're doing this. So we're continuing, we're a little distracted because it's raining and unexpected, but we're gonna keep going anyway. But you see now, so much that you can do with these horses outside of the arena, but still school them. Every day you get on them, or every day you have anything to do with them, this can be a step towards success with your riding, okay? Toby, if you just stay there for me, I'll come around and I'll meet you back at that track. And if you just watch him as he goes around, that'd be amazing. And you see guys, rain, hail or shine, Notice I didn't go, it's raining, let's get in. Poor Toby wishes I did, he's literally in a t-shirt. But I just kept going, because guess what guys? It rains at your competition sometimes. It's just what happens, you know? And you've got to teach the horses not to be too precious, to be able to cope with these things. And you see, he has little moments of upset, but he calms down. You see how I use 
the circles and use the leg yields while I'm working him like this to help him with all the same things that I help him with when I ride him, which is opening that right hand side of his body. Good boy, little man. Look at this. Now we're going downhill. Yeah, he's gotten a little tense again because he's seeing Toby, but it doesn't matter. You just, good boy. You just ignore it. You just keep walking. You just keep guiding. All of those same things that I teach you when you're riding them when they spook, you don't need to get upset at them. You don't need to get angry. You just keep guiding them. Keep showing them where to go. Keep just letting them find their way. Yeah? And now look at it. It's beautiful and sunny again. <laughs> I hope before there is rain on the camera because, yeah. And then you know how much it really was raining. But again, you see him now. He was spooking at Toby going, oh, Toby, Toby's scary. I don't know about Toby. And you don't correct him. You don't say, don't be silly, Toby's fine. You just keep going. And just by keeping going and just sort of ignoring the fact that there's even a problem, they just come together. They just come with you. Now, something that he doesn't like to do, which I do try to do a little bit, is stop. Okay, so when I stop, I want to hold, then I release, hold, and I release, and then I go. And what I try to do with the stop and the, the stopping on the way home is that I try to make sure I release before he tries to. So I don't let him almost need correcting. The second he stops, I hold my breath for a moment and then I go again. And then I can work on that and try and make it better as I go along. But if they don't like to halt, you do need to teach them immobility. And this is a great way to do it. But remember, when you're teaching immobility, you can't force it. it needs to be a positive experience. So again, hold, release, and go. And you see, I go as soon as I think potentially there's an issue. Now I've dropped a little bit my rope here, so I'm gonna hold. Good boy. Fix myself up. And that can be a little bit the dangerous thing when you're right, doing your lun double lunging. So you be very careful that you got both reins. Hold. And you go. Good boy. Hold. 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 Good. So you notice I release immediately. It's very, very important. Good boy. And then off I go. Very good, yeah? And again, a ho, ho. Good boy. And Toby's gonna go around the whole side and you can see I'm not holding him there. I may need to walk, we'll see, but hopefully he'll just stay there. And this is all for test riding later. So he, oh, good boy. Uh-uh, uh-uh, ho. Uh, this is all because Toby's there, but we don't mind. We just continue on our message. If they go backwards, you take control and ask them to go backwards. Then I leave him alone again. Look at that. So you see, I don't correct the rain back. I don't correct the behavior. Good boy. And then I go. Oh, I think he's trying to go over and eat Toby. Good boy. Yeah? How cool is that? Is it not the best thing you've ever seen? So now... Get up. Come on. Annoy you, won't it? Good boy. Come on. Come on. Good job. Good job. So now that he's actually stopping, we're going to start to work a little bit on the squareness of the hold. Yeah? So let's go hold. Yeah? That's it, good boy. Uh. If he wants to go backwards, I go backwards. So don't try to stop them from going backwards. If he wants to go backwards, you just take over and say, fine, we're going backwards. There you go. Oh, look at that. Look at those legs, guys. All right, let's try again. Forward. And hold. So it's on me. Good boy. And even though they're not actually side by side, they're on the correct line, okay? So he really listened to the moment I said ho. So now I'm gonna make the walk a little smaller. Very good. And by the end of the line, hopefully it will have a square halt. So I change the tempo of the walk. Little bit smaller. And every time I go a little smaller, he wants to go a bit sideways. So I just keep playing with him. Then he creeps it along. 
Not bad, guys. Not bad. If you look at what we started with, woo! <laughs> so you see, it's all about having fun with them. It's all about playing with them. It's about them enjoying it. Look at him standing here. Because two things, when he got tense, I didn't react. Good boy. And off we go. I set him up. Good boy. I set him up for success. And when he went backward, I didn't try to send him forward. I took control of backward and said, fine, if you want to go backward, let's actually go backward. And then, then it's no longer an evasion because you're actually asking them to do it. And again, ho, good boy, back. It's all right. Ho, forward. Good boy, little guy. Make the walk smaller. See if we can get that square halt again. Woo, that's pretty close again. Pretty close. Go again. Smaller. Whoop. I had a reaction there that's negative, so I go forward first to solve it. Then smaller. Smaller. Oh, that. Look at that. Perfectly square halt. <laughs> and then forward again. And now that we've done that, I'll just let him cruise home. Yeah, it's all about him now cruising home and just enjoying life. And you can see, you think, oh, I'm just out here hacking him. I'm just out here having a bit of fun with him. But actually you can make this a schooling event. You can make this an event that lets him enjoy it. Good boy. Good boy, very good boy, very good boy. Look at this happy, happy, happy little monkey. And ho, oh, good boy. Now, in a moment, we're gonna to need to put him to bed, okay? So I always try to find a nice, safe place to do that, okay? So what we're gonna do is Toby's going to go and open up a field and I'm gonna walk him into that. So Toby, my filmer, has just gone and opened the gate of the round yard for me. So now what I do at the end is I want him to finish on a really good note, but I also want to be safe. So ultimately, when I undo all this gear, I will, there will be a moment where he's completely loose, okay? So I need to make sure that I'm in a nice, safe area, so if I do lose him, it won't actually matter, okay? So now I just walk him into the round yard area, okay? I'm going to stroll in. And again, you see guys, I just can't reiterate how fun this is because you can really just have so much fun with your horse, enjoy the process, but every single time you ride him, still school him in a way. You know, today we worked on immobility and halts. We worked on being okay in the rain. We worked on so many cool things that we were able to, whoa, good boy. They were able to have an enjoyable horse <coughs> That's okay. Toby's trying to shut the gate, guys. Perfect. Sorry about that, guys. We're able to have a horse that enjoyed himself, but a horse that was also schooled, and we did things that helped his future. Okay? So always keep that in mind. What can I do with my horse to make it fun, but also help his future as a dressage horse? All right, guys, so now I'm in a round yard. So if I lose him, we're all safe and sound. And I'm making sure I finish on a really easy, good note again. And again, look at how he's like, oh, mom, what are you doing standing there still? So there's a couple of things you've got to think about. I've got to get the lunge ropes off him in the safest way possible, also so things don't wrap around his legs. Ideally, you'd have someone come and hold him for you and help you do this. But, you know, in reality, sometimes we do have to be alone. So I'm going to show you how I do it when I'm alone, okay? So first thing I do is bring my hand in closer but not my body, okay? So I've got a shorter rope, let more, less to deal with, but I'm not going to get kicked in the head till. Still, my right one, I just caress him up his bottom so that he doesn't think I'm asking him to go, yeah? Then I'm on the side, and if I'm on the side here, I'm less likely to get kicked. <coughs> Excuse my cough, guys. And then I just gently caress him as I fix everything up, okay? Now that I'm here, I get my rope and I pop it over the saddle, okay? I then unclip this lead rope thread it through, clip it back up again. Now I have my horse, okay? Then 
I unclip this side, de-thread it, and then I make sure I take it off the horse, okay? Because you don't want to walk away and that gets dropped. Now, if I was by myself, I'd just chuck it there, <laughs> walk home, pick it up later, okay? Because then you've got less things to worry about on your way home. It's really, really important that you keep to safety with these things as well. These are 20, 10 meter long ropes. The longer they are, the more things are that could go wrong. So you can see how happy our little monkey is. He loved it. You can try this as well. But again, remember guys, take practice, be careful. Keep yourself in small areas first. Make sure you're away from obstacles. Keep yourself safe. I hope you enjoyed this. Please put any comments below and um, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see, anything else I can help you with. I really try to make this thoroughbred series something that's not just me riding around and around in circles the whole time. It's really showing you that full picture of how we create such cool little calm guys. I will don't forget to subscribe. I'll get in big trouble if I don't say that. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe and I will see you guys next week. Mwah. Bye!